Welcome to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Silver fans, this is T and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, Entertainment. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. We made it to the 10th floor of the parking garage and here we are. We arrived safely in Chicago. Check out that Chicago rooftop living there. We are heading to Harlan J. Burke. We're gonna shoot a coin shop video just for you to enjoy and if you do enjoy coin shop videos i make a bunch of them be sure to subscribe to see more and while you're at it hit the bell notification so you're alerted to my next video all right hey back at harlan j burke my man russ russ how's it going man it is going. How are you, sir? Oh, pretty good. You're surviving the smoke okay over here? Uh, yeah. You know, it reminds me of Texas. <laughs> you know, it's just barbecue all the time. There you go. And uh, it's supposed to let up, I think, in, in, by the weekend or so. But it's kind of surreal driving up here. You couldn't even see the Sears Tower driving up here. No, it has been very bad down here. It's cleared up a little bit, but yeah. we'll see what happens. All right. Hey, you've got something cool there. Uh, what do you have? I do. In the way of that slab coin there. Yeah. So this is my current pick for the coolest thing in the shop right this second or at uh -huh. least the coolest thing in my case yeah um, this is an 1820 bust quarter in PCGS MS 63 let me take a look at this baby a um, bust quarter bust quarter it doesn't look like a quarter Russ Are no you sure it's a quarter I am sure it's a quarter so <laughs> right. um, they changed the size um, and that's actually a reason that you don't see a lot of those now um, so bust quarters are a lot more challenging to find than bust half dollars. Um, their mintages are generally a lot smaller. For example, the mintage on that guy is only about 111,000. Uh, hence um, the high price tag. Correct. And uh -oh. most of them that you find are going to be very, very circulated. Yeah. Um, so you notice that it's bigger, which means it's heavier. So mm -hmm. when they change to the standard quarter size that we all know today in the 1830s, most of those went to the melting pot. Okay. So they went to the melting pot because there was more silver in them than 25 cents. Were there any coin collectors back then? Yo, no, no, absolutely. Did that phenomena start? No, absolutely. There's always, so, you know, coin collecting is called the hobby of kings for a reason. Okay. So, I mean, the Roman emperors collected coins. Yeah. Um, kings collected coins. Um, but it was generally, you know, 25 cents back in the day, that could be a wage for a day for somebody in that time frame. Sure. You, you can't put that away. Right. You've got to right. use it. Right. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. Looking back, like, you know, putting away, say, like, uh, statehood quarters mm -hmm. today. Right. Like, they're never going to be valuable. No. There's, there's, you know, millions and millions of they them. They were made to be collectible. Exactly. And with these, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you know, if you're in the eight, if you're an average Joe in the 1820s, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to put away a quarter. Um, no, and coin collecting. That's a flower. That's oh, rope. Yeah. That's yeah, a hammer. It's, exactly. That's, it, it's, you know. it's real money. Uh -huh. um, and so, yeah, a lot of them don't really survive in that kind of high state of preservation. And coin collecting in this country didn't really become a phenomenon until about the 1850s. Okay. After the 1850s, then it really becomes a big thing. Um, but there's also the point that um, collectors did not collect by date and mint mark. They generally just collected by date. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, obviously there's no other mint in 1820 besides the Philadelphia mint. So that's not a factor. But for a lot of coins like... Um, stuff that was made in San Francisco, stuff that was made out west. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't collect those even when there were coin collectors. They mm -hmm. were just looking for an example f for each date. And then really it's not until the early 1900s that mint mark collecting becomes a thing as well, like we know it today. Now this is large O. Is that a zero? It, that, it is large in, zero. Okay, um, large zero. Yes. So what's cool about all of these coins, these early coins, um, all of the dates and like the stars and things, those mm -hmm. were all hand punched into the dies. Okay. Um, because what you have is you have a hub, and a hub is the the basic design, so like the the main figure, okay. and then they have to hand put they had to hand put everything else in there. Really? So yeah, so that's why you get things like there's for this one um, there's a large zero and there's a small zero, okay. and that's literally just a workman grabbing a different size punch wow. and just punching it in those dies. Uh huh. Wow. That's so. Let me ask you this. Sure. 
Uh, how long do you anticipate that's going to sit around here in the shop? I mean, is there a big market for that? Oh, do they yeah. move pretty quickly? Um, you know, it really depends. This is a very advanced coin. Okay. Um, and it's for an advanced collector. Ah. So, I mean, it's about a, it's almost an $11,000 coin. Yeah. Um, so your average Joe is not going to be able to afford it. Right. Um, so they do move. The problem is you've just got to find the right audience for okay. it. Because this kind of coin, this is a very good coin for a... Um, what I would consider like an advanced type collector uh -huh. um, or even somebody that's trying to kind of get um, a decent registry set started for type. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not it's not the coin for your average collector. I mean, when it's as much as a used car, uh -huh. it kind of becomes, you know. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Are you going to sell that here or is that going to auction? Or oh, no, it'll be uh, it'll be sold here in the store uh, okay. or online on our website. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stuff like this usually moves best at like shows and things like that. Ah, so, you know, we have the A&A coming up in August. We have Baltimore. We have all kinds of different shows coming up. Mm -hmm. So um, that's generally where these kind of coins find a venue. We don't really get a lot of people walking in the shop looking for $10,000 coins. Right. Um, you know, we do get people that see stuff on our website and they're like, I would love to look at that in hand before I buy it, things like that. But, you know, sometimes it surprises you and sometimes somebody does say, I'll take it and whips out plastic or whatever. All right. Well, I asked you uh, to show me the coolest thing in the shop. That is your pick. And in just a moment, we'll have uh, Mike uh, show his pick. Uh, thanks for the time, Russ. Yeah, always. Uh, these want to come My turn. In. I got this. You guys good? My yeah, turn. Yeah. All right, Mike. Stepping up to the plate, you want oh, to yeah. cus these customers to uh, be helped, or you want to I guess go ahead and roll? Press Scott. All right, cool. Let's keep it rolling. What do you have? Oh, well, see, you asked for the coolest thing that we have in the shop. Mm -hmm. So I besides uh, you, of course. Well, right? besides me and Russ, no. <laughs> so um, I went immediately to a bag toned Morgan. Okay, bag toned. Now, that's Morgan. a bag toned Morgan. Okay. It is. Uh, let's see. It's in eighteen eighty three. Uh, 83 cc. 83 cc. Oh, wow. And that coin is in MS67 plus with a CAC kiss. Wow. So something to know is that when when uh, PCGS or NGC grades something with either a plus or a star, mm -hmm. and it goes to CAC for approval, they don't verify the plus. They just verify it to the grade of 67. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one John has has verified. What I think is interesting is if you look at the toning on the front, you can yeah. literally see where the two coins were sitting on it. Ah, yeah. And then in between is the toning from the bag. Uh -huh. And the way that we know that that's bag toning is because the reverse is blast white. Yeah. So it's it's really clean on the one side because yeah. it didn't touch anything. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, where the two coins were touching it, there's no tone. But right in between, there's a little bit of tone from the bag. That is... Probably one of the nicest 83 cc's I've ever seen. I can't say I've ever heard that term bag toning before. So uh, yeah, you're educating me and my audience right along with me. Um, very cool. That's I'll tell you what. And the cc, I mean the mintage on this has got to be way low. Yeah. So this is this is a typical backpack. Uh huh. Made out of cloth. Yep. And basically, you know, sulfur from this will leach out ah. and leach onto the coins. Okay. So you know, Morgan dollars are known for having sat in bank vaults for decades sure. because they just weren't spent, they weren't circulated. Mm -hmm. So in the intervening, what, 70 or 80, 90 years that they sat in, yep. you know, this bag. Waiting to be found. It was just the part of the bag, you know, just the part of the coin that touched the bag uh -huh. that ended up getting toning from it. And, um, you know, you look for patterns. With this one, you can see half moons here. And here, that's where the coins were laying on top of it. Yeah. So you look for patterns and you try and figure out what happened. This one is kind of easy to tell. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, this one is a 67 cc. So, I mean, this is this is a ten thousand dollar coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a beauty. I'll tell you what. Thank you not only for showing me that beauty, but the education to boot. Appreciate it's it. It's no buddy. fun without the education. You got that right. Thanks, Mike. Anytime. Mike and Russ are two of the coolest numismatists you'll ever come across. And I'll tell you what, these channel members are really cool for supporting my efforts to bring you videos like this. And thank you for watching. I really appreciate your viewership. And now it is time for me to show you what I purchased. And here we go. I'll tell you what, some coins from the generic bin for melting. Now the coins 
to the right here are not for melting. Those are ancients, and they are really, really fascinating. Thanks for watching, everybody.